What's up guys, welcome to another edition of the vlog. Unfortunately, the main event didn't work out, but today a really fun tournament. I loved playing this one last time, the 3K Mystery Bounty. At the PCA, I was able to obtain two bounties. Obviously, I wanna go for more and not pull the minimum this time. So let's go and see what happens. Oh shit, you just busted the main. Yeah, how about you? Uh, I busted the main as well, <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Mystery so Bounty now. Yeah, yeah, it's all good, you know. Did you, uh, you didn't cash though, right? No, but uh, I was fortunate enough to win two satellites, so. Oh, shit. <laughs> so I cashed out the other one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, Sadie's is keeping me alive so far. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's, I, mean, that's I think that's uh, the story for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so are you gonna play mystery? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm waiting at least. Oh. You too? No, I just, I was pre-registered. Uh, I'm smart, you know. I'm old, I'm mature, not. and responsible. I thought that was going to be bad karma, so I didn't. <laughs> oh, God. This conversation is over. All right. Yeah, All good right. luck, okay? okay? Bye. All right. 3K. Mystery bounty. Quick little freshen up course. Mystery bounty. Yeah, the bounties come into play when you're in the money. And then uh, you can draw a random lottery ticket because the bounties can be really big, right? Because all the bounties from the whole field gets combined and you can pull, pull a lottery ticket, you can pull a huge bounty. <laughs> Who knows? I had two 1K bounties at the PCA, super fucking tilting. My first one ever. I can't wait to pull it. A thousand. Hey. <laughs> Twice a thousand. All right, whatever, GG. But now we might actually pull a big one. I have faith. This is my time. Yeah, let's yeah. go give me a high five. Yeah. Uh. yeah, nice. Yeah, how much you got? Uh, zero, asshole. Uh, no, you, when do you bust? Yesterday, somewhere at like oh. 5 p.m., 6 p.m. No, it's fine. And you? What? 700? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Propaganda. People believe it as well. I've had to disappoint dozens of people writing to me like, you're the sickest, how do you get these stacks? I'm like, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. What are you in, Mystery Bounty? Yeah, I'm going to start a Mystery Bounty now. Ah, that's great. Yeah. 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 Yeah, fine. Anyway, I've got to find my thing because I'm not in the features, so I don't know where the hell I am. Take it See down. See you in a little bit. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Basically, uh, this one's going to be easy. Look at that for a transfer. Hey. hey, how's it going? Good? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Look at that. Right. Where the fuck is everyone? It's irresponsible poker players, huh? Look at me, nice on time. How many people we start playing at the table? Three players. Three players we start. Ooh, nice. So three players. So that means that also, because you have a big blind ante, normally when you play with eight players, everybody plays a little bit of the ante, but now one person plays the whole ante, so every pot is insanely uh, good to fight for. It's really expensive to play three-handed, so I love it though. So let's hope that there's only three or four people. Easy. The funny thing is though, is that this usually is going to result in me making a bluff because it was only four-handed. So let's hope that in two minutes time we're not going to have a tough conversation. <laughs> we just sat down in the 3k mystery bounty. Great tournament, field's looking good, table seems nice. The blinds are 100, 100 with a 100 ante. The first level. Everybody has starting stack, which means everybody has 300 big blinds. I love to play some deep stack poker. The hijack, who seems a competent young French guy, makes it 300. I'm on the button with nines. I can go a few different ways with many hands on the button here. We're super deep, so nines plays well as a call, but also as a re-raise. I think this deep I prefer to raise with nines because it's a very strong hand and I can punish some hands in position. I make it a thousand. The small blind, who's a South Korean sponsored pro, calls. I have no information, but he seems competent as well. The one problem with calling here in the small blind is that it's usually just gonna be a pair. People will have oftentimes a hand like ace-queen offsuit, ace-queen suited, king-queen suited, or it's gonna be a hand like jacks, tens, nines, eights, sevens, just a hand that people are very uncomfortable for betting with. The problem with calling here is that you're pretty much face up. My immediate read is that it's gonna be one of those hands. The hijack calls as well, and we see a flop. The flop is seven four deuce rainbow. Great flop for my hand. I flop an over pair, and it's unlikely somebody has a higher pair unless the small blind has tens or jacks. One thing that's good to consider though, is that the hijack's probably not gonna 4-bet with a hand like 10's jacks, so I have to give him some credit as well. They both check, and I feel like it's really good to start off with a bet. It might be counterintuitive to some people, but it's actually good the lower your pair, the better it is to bet with it, because a hand like aces or kings need less protection. But this deep, we want to be very value forward, and betting is just the best option. So I bet 1300. 
I don't have to bet big in this situation, my bluffs are gonna work and I can leverage their stacks and positions against each other. The small blind calls and the hijack folds. The turn is a jack of diamonds. Even though this is an over card to my hand, I think the card is still okay. It actually makes a chance less that somebody has a hand like jacks and I can still go for some value. An ace or a king would have been way worse, whereas this still gives me some options. The small blind checks. I really think I want to bet here. I can still get some value from under pairs. Back to flush draws as well since there's two diamonds on board now. If I check here, it makes it also more difficult to get value from hands that I beat now. What if the river is a king or a queen? It's going to be much harder to get value from eights, a seven or a hand like pocket sixes. Also, by betting, the action is usually going to get checked to me on the river and I get to decide if I want to bet on a good card or just check back a gnarly card. So I decide to bet 2600. This is about half pot and I think it's a good size bet to get value from worse, where I still leave my options open and give my hands some protection. He thinks for a little bit and he calls. We both see the river, queen of clubs. He checks. Now I really have to decide if I want to bet my hand. Obviously this hand is way good to bluff with, I don't really need to, I beat plenty of hands, so now I have to decide if I can get value with this. I think on a Broadway card run out, it's going to be very scary for hands like sixes or a seven to call again, so I don't think there's much value to be gotten. On the flip side, if I open up the betting again, I could open myself up to some check raises, which is just not the ideal situation. If I have a hand like a backdoor flush draw, the jack and the queen would be great cards for me to bluff, and I can consider those. In terms of value bets, I'm looking for aces and kings, or of course a rivered queen. Nines is a perfect hand to check. This is also one of the advantages of betting the turn. I check. I look over to the one seat and I'm really hoping to see pocket sixes, an eight, or a hand like a7 suited. He flips over sevens. He flopped top set. It's definitely a hand I expect to see sometimes, but there's plenty of hands I beat as well. I think this also goes to show that the hands that the small blinds are going to play this way are pretty face up. It sucks that it's this one though and I lose a chunk of my stack. I do think that in this scenario I lost the minimum. On to the next one. Good game. Good luck. Damn. Man, it's just... It's too bad, nothing really working out. Pretty much got short, just missed pretty much every hand. Open the button with a hand like queen nine suited, flop comes eight high, continuation bet, they raise. Um, had a good hand to re-raise bluff with, doesn't go well, defend the big blind, miss, defend the big blind, miss, you know, call with king queen, miss, to fall to a bet. So it's just been like sort of like steadily down. Um, had uh, 14,000 left and 300, 600. And um, under the gun opens to 1200. Uh, I have jacks, great spot for me. Um, I have 24 big blinds. Um, he opens to 1200. I make it 3k with this stack depth. I want to make my three bets a lot smaller. Um, and uh, folds around to him, he calls. Flop is uh, 1083, two clubs. Perfect board for me, really, with jacks. Not going to flop an overpair that often. Uh, also think that, you know, I'm never, he could have aces, but I'm never, uh, generally not going to be up against an overpair. Um, so, he's going to have a lot of 10x, he's going to have some 9s. Uh, I think that pocket 10s, he shows pre-flop, he's never fighting with that, so it's super safe. Uh, I bet he calls, turn as a queen, two flush rolls out there, I really don't want to give a free card here. Um, don't think he'll ever hit the queen that often. If he has a flush roll with a queen in it, he's going to shove the flop. So he checks, I go all in, and he has a set of threes. So, yeah. Um, sucks. I mean, what can you do? Plenty of hands I beat. Plenty of hands I do well or well against, and that's it. So, another bullet down. It's, uh, it's a bit frustrating, I have to, I'm not going to lie. Most of my days just feel kind of like, uh, obviously I had a deep run in the, in the 2K, but with this in the Bahamas, I feel like most of the live tournaments have just been like, steady decline, pretty frustrating mm -hmm. runs. Uh, but luckily there's a second bullet, so. I guess we may have to go for that one. The last one. Last one of the series. <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. It's nice though, it's 50 big blinds, so lots of room to play still, so I'm just gonna immediately sit down. All right, it's a second bullet, 3K mystery bounty. We just had a dinner break and it's always nice to collect your thoughts a little bit. We have about starting stack and 400, 800 with an 800 ante. The big blind's not there yet. He must have had a nice dinner or something, but he's missing his big blind. I'm in a small blind, and that means I get to defend a lot because I close the action. 
The cutoff makes it 2000. I'm in a small blind with Queen Jack offsuit. This would have been a standard call anyway, but especially with the big blind missing, it's really nice to just go and see a flop. The flop is King 9 Deuce, two spades. I have the Jack of Spades, so that offers some possibilities. On top of that, I have a gotcha to the nuts, and it's a board that my opponent's gonna continuation bet a lot. I'm always gonna start with a check though. The cutoff bet's 2800. I'm a little bit surprised because it's slightly big, it's about 50% pot, and I think it's a board he can also bet smaller on. With my hand, there's no other option than call though. The backdoor spade's really nice, and of course the gut shot to the nuts. At this point, a queen or jack could also be good. The turn is a gin card, the 10 of diamonds. I check. He now sizes up his betting. He bets 8,500 into about 11,000. I don't think there's any reason for me to raise, because my range is gonna be pretty weak. I could have a single king, a 10 or a nine or a flush draw, and because I'm closing the action pre-flop, he could decide to barrel me off a weekend like that. I call the 8500 and we go to the river. The pot's about 30,000 now. I'm hoping for a blank because a spade could destroy my action or it could mean that I lose the hand. At this point though, I'm not folding to a single bet anymore because some of my flush draws would have raised the flop, all in the turn, and he's gonna expect some of my stronger hands to go all in on the turn as well. My only option here is to check again. I'm really banking on him having some bluffs in his range. He goes all in for my remaining 15,500. I instantly call, of course, and I see the good news. He reluctantly turns over aces, and I scoop a massive pot. Oh, so I had this hand that, uh, that's been bothering me uh, that I would like to hear your opinion on. I mean, it's not, okay. L let me not give you any precursors, so don't influence what you have to say. So- Too late, it's under, been bothering you. <laughs> under, under the gun opens in 400, 800, so we're like 40, 50 deep. In 3K? Uh, yeah. Okay. And um, they, both cover me, small blind calls, uh, he min raises by the way, small blind calls, uh, I call the big blind with king six of diamonds. So uh, pot on the flop is 5600, um, jack 10 nine, all diamonds. And you have king six of diamonds? King six of diamonds. Okay. So nice, uh, you know, happy days. Small blind checks, I check, under the gun checks. Turn is the eight of hearts. So queen makes it straight now, yeah? Okay. Um, small blind checks, what's your sizing? I think you want to bet, okay, so I used to bet big a lot here, but I think we're supposed to do a lot of small betting as a strategy. Uh. Like, I don't know, I, this could be wrong as well, maybe it's like dynamic and changes a lot, but I think when, because I, I bet big against ape styles in deep in a tournament somewhere, and he's like, and I messaged him later to like ask him what he thought about it, he's like, yeah, you don't have any big bets there. It was like a four-way pot on the turn where I was like leading from like the big blind. Mm. Um, so I like size down a lot in this spot. So I'd probably just bet like anywhere from like 30 to 45%, something awkward-ish like that. What about the fact that we have all the flushes? Like we have everything, right? We have, we yeah, have but eight deuce of diamonds, three yeah. deuce of diamonds. You have you have the most flushes out of everybody. Yeah, sure, under the gun, un, like under the gun does, is capped now, right? He's gonna bet all his flushes. Yeah. Okay, so that's why I thought I was like, okay, we can actually put a lot of. You bet big or something. Yeah, I bet big. Because yeah, I, I mean, it's fine. It doesn't. It doesn't like. I would just like from this conversation that I had with Ape a while yeah. ago. Like, I could just be like misapplying things as well. But I would just like lean towards smaller and then like pull, go polar on the river. Okay. Uh, I bet 80%, so I bet 4,400 into 56. Okay. Under the gun, because uh, I, I, in my head... It seems good to just start charging a queen, though, now. Yeah, yeah, right? I just like, want to start charging. But, like, are you really going to get paid two big streets from a queen as well? Like, is, is it going to go, like, 80 and then pot, and a queen's just going to fucking pay you? If it's a queen have, of like, diamonds. A, if it does, yeah, if it, has, if it has a diamond to go with, it'll pay you. Yeah. But, like, if you bet, like, one third, and then, like, you know, then you pump it, maybe, maybe more queens That's pay true. you or something. Yeah, polar twice is... Okay. So I bet 4,400, small blend calls. Uh, River's the ace of clubs. Ace so, of clubs. Yeah, so okay. it doesn't matter, right? Um, small blind checks. Now we do want it. We, we have to bet they big They both now, called though. on the flop? No, no, no. No, 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 no. Just a small blind continues. Yeah, okay, small okay. blind continues. Now we do want to bet big, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I bet 12.2. Into? Into 14. Yeah. He goes all in. Not so great. First, obviously, we do like a string of curses, you know? It's quite hard to bluff, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, it seems like, where the, where what the fuck? What if he has worse, worse for value, though? <sighs> what I do mean, you know against the big blinds? Sure. Uh, right? Queen... Because I feel like this is much more of a decision if I have, like, the A-side flush. Seven... What, Jack-10-9 are the only diamonds? Jack-10-9 all diamonds. Eight ace of clubs. Yeah. 
So he's gotta have like seven, six, can't really have a queen high flush. He has to, he, I mean, queen eight, doesn't he peal that from the That's small? That's a straight flush. Yeah, yeah. That's bad for us though. Yeah, oh, I'm trying oh, you to mean think like, of, I'm, try, I'm yeah. thinking of like worst value hands that you can go all in with. No, yeah, it's. It's like a seven high flush. Yeah, That's it. seven, six of diamonds, or one eight, combo. Or six of diamonds if he like, or yeah. six, five of diamonds. Yeah. A couple combos, but like those probably just call. Yeah. Maybe so, they jam? But, okay, so think about, okay, so let's think about like bluffs forward, right? That he can offset his value with. Do you think that somebody would just, let's say he has queen jack uh, off, right? Or let's say uh, he has- Well, I mean, he has like a bunch of like ace of diamonds combos to bluff with still. You think he calls on the turn, check calls? So he's a flush, yeah. He has a flush shot. If you have an ace of diamonds, he has like ace jack, ace 10, ace, like, ace okay. jack and ace 10 at least off suit with the ace of diamonds. Ace queen, he still has of course, which is a straight. That's which true. like you could just like turn turn into a bluff somehow. He has king queen for the bigger straight, but that's not gonna jam, so but that's like, kind of irrelevant. I kind of feel but like- king jack with the king of diamonds. I feel, yeah, okay, king jack with the king of diamonds. I think that's, well, we have the king of diamonds, so. So we can't have king jack with the king of diamonds. So, <laughs> <laughs> the thing I'm thinking about is like, I feel like, and that's that's why I ended up folding, because I feel like anything with a blocker is a good hero call. If he has ace 10 with the ace of diamonds, then nah, there's no good hero calls in the spot. Think okay. about like how you bet and like what your range looks like. I don't think it's like a good spot to hero call at all. Okay, but what if you have the queen of diamonds? Yeah, queen of diamonds is like one of the good hands to hero call, yeah. But sure. that's also the nut card to turn into a bluff almost. Ace of diamonds would be better. Yeah? Because you have more hands like, yeah, you don't want to turn like, uh, queen of diamonds is probably too high value just to just, to just call with, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you have a straight, the queen of diamonds, like you have like ace jack to bluff with, you have ace 10 to bluff with. Would you really, even, would you really even, call even the turn? with ace queen with the diamond would be better. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, of course. What the fuck? You, you just, you just, you're just saying. If you're saying that you want people to fold like ace jack with a diamond with the ace of diamonds on the turn. On jack to nine eight though. Yeah, that means that you just never ever bluff. If you want, if you're expecting people to fold the ace of diamonds jack there, that just means that you have no bluffs. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that that, that would that's, say something very bad yeah, about me. I, I yeah, I think so at least. Maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, but I think so. Okay, but so. Like in conclusion, like we're pretty much just folding. I mean, all... he can have sets too, right? You can bluff with like, he could have eights to bluff with. Maybe people, I don't think that's an intuitive bluff at all, but I'm just saying like, yeah, that's where ace, like it could come have from. Eight of diamonds he can have as two well. pairs just to bluff with, just some crazy bluff, you know? I mean, I'm just, I'm just naming hands yeah, that yeah. could potentially bluff, I'm not saying good bluffs. I'm just saying, I don't think actually it's like that hard to find hands to bluff with for him. Like, I think he could find, there are like a plethora of hands to choose from if he so, was so inclined. It's pretty unnatural still though. Like he has, he has to be definitely very unnatural. But you said it's a good player, no? Well, I mean, he seems solid. It's okay. not. It's not like you know. I think like, oh shit, that's Darwin. Or a, something, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just. Uh... Okay, but I mean, so I guess we're just calling our uh, ace high flushes, and we're folding our king. I eyes? mean, I'd probably just call this. He won't catch me folding this hand, but no, I'll just. He can have the money. Yeah, if he's got an ace high flush, good for him. But don't we? We have so many combos of ace high flushes to call with. Sure but I've also got king high flush, so. <laughs> I mean, it's, I figured- it's, no, I, I mean, this is like a really big fold. Don't you think that if I folded and he was bluffing that he would show me the eight of spades? Yeah, yeah, if he was bluffing, he probably would have folded, so he probably made a great fold. Yeah. Like he probably shows he went, he went, He went like this on the side as well, like he, he put his he hand- He didn't like, want to show it. So maybe, maybe, I mean, some guys are just like never show wizards, you yeah. know? You probably made a great fold, honestly. Okay, nice. Yeah. That's Again, I'd still call. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks. <laughs> We're now playing 600-1200 with a 1200 anti. The table has been absolutely insane. A guy just busted that called off 80 big blinds preflop with queen nine suited. So you can imagine how the action has been. The hijack makes it 2500. It's the same guy that I played my queen jack versus aces against. I'm on the button with tens. I can definitely decide to do two things here. I can both re-raise and call. Both are absolutely fine options. I generally have a pretty aggressive image and I've been pretty active on the table. I decide to go for some extra value. I make it 7,500. He thinks for a while and he really seems to be measuring out my stack. After some deliberation, I see him slide over 19,000. This is a very iffy spot. This gets very technical because it's really important to determine how many good hands are in there and how many bluffs are gonna be in there. Most of his bluffs are gonna consist out of like ace five, ace four, king 10 suited. So a lot of those hands do pretty well against that still. One of the big determining factors here for me is because we're so deep, I think that he was gonna flat jacks. The fact that jacks is not in his four bet range anymore makes my all in with tens a lot better because there's one less overpair to worry about. This gives a little bit more weight into his folds. I go all in. 
He makes a very big sigh and reluctantly puts his chips over the line. I'm really hoping for ace-king at this moment. This would be one of those situations where you hate to get it in with ace-king, but you can't, you can't fold it either. He flips over his hand and he has aces. I'm a little bit annoyed. Why would you not like the spot? Maybe he was just uncomfortable because it's such a big pot. Anyway, we go to the flop. Immediately the window card is a 10. I can't help but smile a little bit. Especially after the laboring call, this feels extra good. But of course, the most important thing is that I now can win a massive pot. The other two cards are an 8 and a 3. So far, so good. The turn is a 7. I'm only going to lose if the river is an ace. The river is the beautiful 9. I double up to 190,000, which at this point is almost 160 big blinds. All right, so I have a huge stack. Uh, bounties come into play now. Uh, it really feels good because now I have finally a run where a lot of hands are working out. But other than that, good table, amazing stack. I can't wait to hunt some bounties. Uh, so two to my right in seat five is Paul Tedeschi. He's really good. I think he has, uh, I looked it up earlier as well, to, uh, he has like three million in life uh, score or something. So that's really big. Um, other than that, we have a 70k stack, which is all you know short stacks for me because I got a massive stack. Um, but uh, we have Daniel de Almeida, he's pretty solid. Um, and Nazar Buhayov is very good pro or solid pro from uh, Ukraine, but he has one big line. And that of course is super interesting because it's going to be a mystery bounty. And they're out immediately uh, when we start playing. All right, so the table has been really wild. All the short stacks have been busted and the big stacks are colliding really hard. It's 1,000, 2,500 with a 2,500 ante. Paul Tadeshi is under the gun. He's a good player with about 3 million in live earnings. And he opens up the betting to, with a raise to 5,000. I'm two seats over and I make it 15k with aces. Obviously a great spot. There's some short stacks and big stacks behind me. And in a bounty, you welcome any action. And obviously I have aces and I want to get paid. The small blind calls. Now this is very interesting. If you guys remember from our vlog from day 1B of the EPT main event, when people cold call on a small blind, it usually means a pair or a hand like king, queen, ace, queen. Paul Tadeshi calls as well. The flop is 10-5-3, two hearts, one spade. Note that I don't have the ace of hearts, which is significant. They both check to me. I definitely want to bet and I don't really have to bet big. A lots of king, queen are going to miss. There's also going to be some under pairs to the 10. So it's both easy to bluff and it's important to get some value. This suits a small bet perfectly. So I bet 18k, which is about one third pot. The small blind calls, under the gun folds. So now I really think he has a pair that could be lower than a 10. He could also still have jacks or a set of 10s, of course. He could have something with a single heart in it or something with a backdoor flush draw. My bet's relatively small and the small blind's a very active player. He's called me in two spots earlier with queen 10 offsuit and king 10 offsuit, both very debatable calls. The turn is a jack of diamonds. Pretty horrible turn. I think Jax is a big part of his range that he's going to continue with on the flop, although I do think that he's going to check raise that hand sometimes. He checks, and I don't really see the value of betting here. If he does have a pair under a 10, he's just going to fold it now. I have a lot of Broadway combos in my range, and even if I don't and have a hand like King Queen or Ace Queen, this card gives me a lot of equity. That would be a disaster in case he has 9s or 8s for him. Because I think that his range is mostly under pairs or Jax or 10s, I think that this card is a good time for me to check. He's also pretty aggro and he might turn some hands into bluffs. The river's the king of diamonds. Pretty awful card again. He might have floated some ace-queen on the flop. He can definitely have some king-jack with a backdoor flush draw or a hand like king-10. I think the biggest problem of this river is that against a weak part of his range, I won't get paid anymore. Now if he has nines, eights, sevens, sixes or anything like that or even a ten, it's going to be really hard to get paid. Since I re-raised pre-flop, I'm going to have a lot of ace-queen, ace-king, so it's really believable that I make a good hand on this spot. I also think that the strongest part of his range, meaning sets, two pairs and straights himself, are going to check to me because I'm going to expect to bet on this card after I check the turn. Even more so, I would even rather bet a hand like King-Queen or Ace-King here because then I at least block some two pairs. And with King-Queen, I would obviously block a straight. I decide to check back because there's tons of other hands I can value bet here and I just don't think he's going to pay me off often enough. I might also run into some check raises. My range is going to be pretty one pair heavy after checking the turn back. So I decide to just protect myself here and check back. He shows two sevens and it just proves again how clear it is when people flat the small blind or from the big blind when there's been a re-raise pre-flop that it's going to be so pair heavy. I just did a, a photo shoot trying on merchandise at the Pokestar store hoodies. They're trying to sell loads. So I think who's, Do, are you sure they're not just trying to motivate you to wear different clothing? Who's our most handsome ambassador? And then now they chose me. Is this like, is this like, uh, is this like a bathing towel? No. Wow. I don't know if this is 
Finton, got, Finton bought me this for my 30th birthday and Manchester United are playing Barcelona tonight in the Europa League. 2-2 two, two after the first leg. So it's a big game, so I've gone for United. Is this like retro or something? Yeah, yeah. And United. It's like, yeah, it's well, it's like, inspired it's, retro, right? It's like 90s retro. United used to have like a trend with top You like it? I like it. United fans do, do, you, do you like it? No. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. Okay, that's fine. Brandon likes it. I like it. My wife likes it. Who, who the hell are you? No, okay, you're asking me. I mean, I'm just answering the question. I mean, if Miami Brandon likes it, then fuck Miami it. Miami Brandon's a big fashion guy as well. Sorry, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm holding people up now. Okay. You still in, yeah? Yeah, yeah, 200. Right. Yeah. You know, you gotta knock people out this one as well, remember? It's like badness and stuff. So I know you got a lot of chips with no badness, you gotta knock people out, you understand? Yeah. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Uh, con pollo. Aquí tienes arroz con pollo. Ah, ti, ti, aquí, aquí, ok. Eh, pollo y arroz. Eh, Lo que tú quieras. ¿Qué te pongo? Eh, para mí mismo, por favor. <laughs> sí. um, wait, what is it? Quiero si quiero. Quiero si quiero. No, no, no. Quiero pollo. ¿Quieres pollo? Pollo tienes aquí. ¿Pollo aquí? Sí. Sí. Ah, muchas gracias. <laughs> Fucking legit, isn't it? You jealous? Jealous of my fucking Spanish? Yeah, yeah, I actually do. Because you, you can actually do like Spanish commentary. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'd already be better than Spanish commentary. Whoops. Gotta play every hand here, you know? Fuck. <laughs> my fault. Hey, how's it going, man? Yo, yeah, no, uh, good. I, um, I finally have some breathing space. So we just made the money and um, I had two really big hands right after. Um, I had one where the hijack opens, um, he min raises off of like 20 big blinds, it's 3,000, 6,000 with a 6k ante. Uh, he opens the hijack, min raises. I have 12 big blinds, or 11 big blinds actually, 65k in the uh, cutoff, I have pocket fives. Um, only one move, all in, good spot for me. Uh, gonna get called a lot, gonna get some falls as well, whatever, doesn't matter. And that's the goal in. Um, so I go all in, uh, he calls with Queen 9 suited, which is super standard uh, because there's obviously a bounty in play. Um, flop comes Ace Jack Deuce with one club, so there could be some sweats on the turn. Turn breaks though, so I really need to fade a Queen or a 9, and uh, I do. So that was a really nice double up. Um, and then in the very next level, 4,000, 8,000. Uh, I'm in the big blind, the small blind just busted, so there's no small blind, single big blind, it's 4 8 k uh, I have 137,000, so 18 big blinds, uh, 17 big blinds, <laughs> 17 big blinds, man, it's so much easier online. I have 17 big blinds, um, and Paul Tedeschi on the button goes all in uh, with Queen 9 and uh, I have, wait, I wrote it down because I wanted to make sure. Oh yeah, he has Queen 9 suited, so I have Ace King uh, and I need to hold there again, again, again against Queen 9 all in. Uh, great spot though for me, he's still gonna have 40%, so I need to fade a lot. Um, and he flopped a gut shot on 10-7-6. Uh, then the turn is a club though, I have the ace of clubs, he has spades, so now that takes away a lot of his outs, any club is not an out anymore, uh, and the river breaks again, so now I actually have a stack to play. So we have over 30 bigs, um, 35 big blinds now, and flying, I mean, compared to what it was before, it's a great feeling, I have some chips to play, I can raise, I can do some 3-betting, I can defend a little bit, like, tournament really opened up for me now, so good shit. Alright, so I just had a few nice hands, I had a few double ups after being short stacked the whole time. We're now in the money and I get a really good hand with finally some chips. I'm under the gun plus one in 5,000, 10,000 with a 10,000 ante. I'm playing about 30 big blinds. I make a 22K with black kings. The hijack calls. He seems like a competent young player and not only that, he has 450K to back it up. The flop is queen jack eight with two clubs and one heart. Now, this is a flop that I've studied a lot. This is the kind of board that you're gonna have to check over to the hijack a lot. Their range plays really well on this board and they're gonna hit a lot of hands. I'm actually gonna have to give this up so much with hands like ace five of spades or a hand like ace seven of hearts that I really wanna check some of my stronger hands as well. Kings is also still quite vulnerable. So I check, seeing what he does. He thinks for a little bit and then checks behind. I think that he can still have a hand like king queen or king jack or jack 10 or anything really, or he could just give up some of his misses knowing that I'm gonna hit this board a little bit as well. The turn is the five of hearts. This brings a second flush draw. Now my hand plays really nice. All of his nutted hands are gonna bet the flop and I can really comfortably play my kings now. After my opponent checks back the flop, he is gonna be capped. 
He's gonna bet his 10 nines. He's gonna bet his queen jacks and his eights, uh, all to get value on a pretty dry board. So it's time to size up a little bit. I bet 45k into a pot of about 70. He calls pretty quickly. At this point, I'm really hoping for a brick, of course. A non-heart or club would be great. The river, however, is a three of hearts. Now I have a decision to make. First of all, I need to think if I want to bet. I really feel like I'm leaving a lot of value on the table against a hand like Queen-10, Queen-9, Jack-10, Ace-Jack, you name it. Just any kind of pair on board that I beat. The one problem is, is that the backdoor flush rock completes. This makes my betting range stronger, but also his range stronger. It's very natural for him to check two hearts on the flop and then call as soon as the flush draw appears. I don't think I'm gonna get paid very often and be good if I bet full pot here or something like three quarters pot. It does make sense for a lot of parts of my range to make a block bet here. I decide to go for one third, bet 55k. He calls very quickly again in mux. Plan worked to perfection. I'm pretty sure I got some value from a hand like Queen-10 or Ace-Jack on a river that wasn't really that great. We win a 269k pot and we're flying now. Yo. Hey, um, yeah, good, actually. Uh, it seems like breaks are a good time for me. Um, I just, had a, I just had a really lucky hand as well. Uh, so my stack went down a little bit again. I was down to 160K, which is about 10 big blinds because we are playing. Uh, we played uh, 10, 15,000, 15,000. Um, and then it was funny because we're seven-handed at the table. I have ace eight, uh, eight offsuit under the gun with 160K, which is, you know, 10 and a half big blinds. But the button is gone because he's pulling a mystery bounty. So his cards got mucked. So essentially we're six-handed. So uh, that makes my hand an all-in. So I was pretty happy with that. So um, I shoved, I shoved uh, 160k. Hijack though calls, uh, goes all in. But you know, hopefully as king jack, king queen. Unfortunately, I saw that he has ace queen of spades, which is a monster. I'm not doing very good against that hand. But uh, so flop was uh, 965. So this is a good flop, obviously, because I can hit a seven uh, or an eight now, and the turn was a seven. So I make it straight. This is really nice, lucky double, again to 20 big blinds. Um, I feel like, you know, obviously in the other hands I was a slight favorite with the ace kings and stuff, but, and the fives, but it's still sort of flipping, you know, so to win all the all-ins is really nice at important moments. And then we kind of got a gift, to be honest. Uh, it's the same guy had aces versus sevens, the one that made some loose preflop calls against me earlier. Um, he, uh, he jammed under the gun uh, for like, 22 big blinds or something uh, in 10,000, 15,000. Jam 22 big blinds, like 350k or something. That's something absurd. Um, I have ace king. I call for 16 big blinds in the cutoff. Uh, he has ace 10 off. So one of those typical, I don't really want to be in a tough spot. And you see this a lot in these mystery bounty tournaments. People just go all in for 30, 20 big blinds or somebody, somebody will open for two big blinds and somebody just goes all in for 45 big blinds. It's fucking insane. So these tournaments are really great. Um, I have ace king though, he has a stand, uh, the flop, the flop was uh, a6-8 with two spades, uh, he has a 10 of spades, um, the turn uh, was a 9, so now he can hit a 10 or a 7, uh, but I, uh, I faded on the river and it's 550k, so um, I think the blinds are going to go up to 10-20 now, which means I'll have 30 big blinds, which uh, you know I haven't had in a while again, so um, these all-ins are really keeping me alive. It's really nice because every time I play like single race pots, it's like um, fold or I'll call the flop with like middle pair, the turn is an ace and they bet pot or something, right? Like all these spots where I like call, call, fold, call, call, fold, or I like raise, get three bet, all-in, fold, you know? So it's, um, it's been really nice. And as long as I keep winning my all-ins, we're gonna win the tournament, right? So, you know, I mean, we're flying now, field gets shorter. I feel like, you know, I've been in these spots also online in like high stakes tournaments deep. Uh, like the deeper it gets, the more comfortable I am. I'm really comfortable around ICM and bounty scenarios, so uh, I know what to do, and uh, we just gotta take it down. You're even comfortable right now on this break. Look at you. You know, I'm the old man on a bench in the park. This is me, just chilling with all my friends. You know, this is how I like it though. Like quiet breaks or breaks with really good friends. I don't like to do sort of like catch up conversations with people, and it's just like chill. You know, it's very intense uh, grinding and. Uh, deep run like this, so it's nice to calm down a little bit until you invaded my privacy, but you know. All right, there's less than 30 players left now. The blinds are 10.25 with a 25k ante. It's getting really expensive. I have little over 20 big blinds. Every pot's crucial right now. The cutoff, who I've been playing with all day, makes it 60k. It's definitely on the bigger side, but at the start of the day, he was opening as big as five or six times the big blinds. So this is just his standard. The small blind calls. 
They both cover me by a lot as I have 550k, which is 22 big blinds. I call the big blind with 3-4 of hearts. Pretty standard. The flop is 7-5 deuce with one heart. The small blind checks. This is a great spot for me. My opponents are going to miss a lot. Most of my outs are going to be relatively clean. And I have a backdoor flush draw to go with it. I check as well. Now it gets a little bit worrisome as the cutoff bets 110k. That's over half pot. I really expect a lot of small bets on this board because people will give up on this board very easily with king, queen or jack high hands. Even though the bet sizing might seem concerning, there could also be a positive here I'm thinking. What if he just wants to take this pot down now? What if he doesn't have a pair? What if he doesn't want to see any turn card? I think that check calling is a little bit dangerous. What if he bluffs the turn all in? His sizing might suggest that could be a, a good move for him. What if the turn is a queen and he bets? These are all pretty hard scenarios. Against a small bet, my standard would always be to call. But my stack to pot ratio is now so low that I feel I can go all in. I shove. He thinks forever. He's really thinking about this. He's thinking for about two minutes now, grabs the chip off his cards and finally slides him into the muck. Amazing, huge pot for me and finally some breathing room again. All right, day three. I just had some breakfast. Um, anything's possible. I think it feels pretty tough. There's a lot of good players left. There's also some spots. Uh, I generally see people go crazy for bounties. So I just need to get a hand and then we can find a double up hopefully or somebody goes all in light against me. Uh, I have 13 big blinds. We're playing 20k, 40k. There's 22 people left. First place, 243,000. Maybe if I can finally win a fucking bounty, it'll be even better. But uh, yeah, it's a big day. It's been a while since I've made a day three in a live tournament. So uh, I'm excited. I can't wait. This is where it gets really interesting, right? The psychology, the tension, the payouts, everything. So yeah, I'm ready. Let's do this. What would a spot be where you would make the biggest adjustments from online to live, or if if any? Well, like if you just put like two recreationals in the mix here, then I'd fold Ace King without even giving. Yeah, you a yeah, second same, thought. same. Because I do feel sometimes it's like you see this guy, he's on his phone, but every time he looks up, he just puts like a call and yeah, yeah, yeah. something. And that, that's when I'm just like, okay, so now there's Queen lots of spots. A fold, yeah, you know? there's lots of spots in like live poker where like you just know that like the four guys behind you just like are never three betting, and the guy in the big blind is just playing like unbelievably weak passive. So like yeah. you can just play a a cut off range from like the low jack or the high jack or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, like yeah. you can play a little bit wider. But yeah, just really just size up the bros on your table and go from there. But like, there's a difference between someone looking competent and someone four bet bluffing the button. No, but the, I mean, you can only go by as far as you know at that stage, right? If they all seem super Yeah, but if you, don't, if you don't know anything other than they seem super reggae, they look super, if you don't have anything other than that, like that's a bold assumption to make. You yeah, should you should like, defer to like not making those kind of bold assumptions. No, no, no. I understand that, but if if we can, I know that. But if we can make those assumptions, like we do it online as well, right? Some guy that we know is like some sort of either either he's a semi reg or he's like a mid six reg or reg. And online, I just put the money in there anyway. As no, well. I wouldn't against online. I would definitely not put the money in there against like a semi reg or mid six reg. No way. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I worded it wrong. But I see where you're going because I don't know if these guys are playing 2K, yeah, 3K, exactly. 5K. Marley and I have been joking about this actually the last few days. They're like, it's kind of crazy in live poker recently how often you'll play with some like sub 26 year old kid and they'll just be like playing incredibly like reggy looking, you know, like doing all the chip tricks, shuffling their chips, stacking them all nice. And then all of a sudden someone will just open under the gun and they'll just three bet jam seven deuce off in the small blind for 22 <laughs> big ones. I swear to God, that's a real thing that happened in a 2K side <laughs> event here. You cannot make assumptions that people are competent based on playing with them for 20 minutes and them not like making themselves look like a fool. I saw the guy, I played a hand with ace for sevens against the guy yesterday. I was like, okay, that's sort of semi-weak. And I was like, wait, I bet he looked reggae, but then I was start paying attention. <laughs> And then he has his hand at the end of the night where he's just like, he, he defends the big blind. It comes king, nine, three, all hearts. He just rips two and a half times spots from the big blind. Some guy calls with tens with a heart. And the guy sees the hand, he stands up, he just goes, see! <laughs> <laughs> and this is just a competent guy. That you, this is the four better. <laughs> because like in the same way, because if you say like people, people are too tight, life to make certain moves yeah, like yeah, that. I don't, I, don't, I don't think this is like, I don't, I don't think like bluffing like this is necessarily unreasonable. You're gonna catch a lot of people saying, 
unnecessary. Yeah, that's what people say in the comments. They go like, why would you, why would you go all in with a 5K with eight high? And, and that's the which funny like, thing. Which like, to an extent, I somewhat agree in this scenario. I did the same thing in the, in the main event too. Like in the 5K main, I like sat down. It wasn't the first level. It was like 600 big blind or something. But I like check raised and tripled off like with a pair. I even turned like a pair into a bluff like by the river. And it was like kind of an aggro bluff, but I was really confident that this French guy was like, this he didn't want to bust this 5k yeah, yeah, you know yeah, like yeah, i had yeah, to read yeah. the like this guy was the kind of guy to bluff kind of thing so i felt like more than happy to do that yeah. so like i think you need in order to do this 8-6 play you need to have that read on this guy you yeah, can't yeah. just be going in cold no, to somebody yeah. that you don't know anything about it, it's too wide to do this like full stop like yeah in, yeah, in yeah but i yeah i i randomized this i had a 95. <laughs> yeah but come on you have to do this i'm super polar against yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. like so, but it's weird because in people's eyes, like a lot of people in the comments were mentioning like, oh, you have eight, six high, but my hand is actually pretty reasonable because I block a lot of his seven X combos from the button. And in people's minds, I need like a backdoor flush draw to miss because that's how you bluff. But that's like not what I want. Yeah, it seems yeah, yeah. like the opposite. Let's say the river's not the ace of hearts, the ace of spades. Then if I go all in with king, jack of hearts, people would be like, oh, you had a missed flush draw at least. But it would be way worse because I need him sure, to sure, have sure. that. Right? Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Like a, that's like a link that people are sometimes missing. But and you that's know, just an inexperienced amateur thing. Right? And, yeah, and, and then because and I was also thinking like, well, we've been playing for 30 minutes. He clearly doesn't want to bust an EPT after 30 minutes. And I can tell you because it didn't feel great. <laughs> so <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I can the man had a full house. Yeah. All right, I need to go. Like, day three, right. uh, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Hi, good morning. Hi. At a certain point, like, I think bounces were worth like 110k chips or something, yes. you know? It's crazy. It was crazy. It was right before the last break, I think. Yeah, yeah. Before the couple big ones got drawn off. Yeah. You know, the guy at my table, he won a 75k mystery bounty, then a 20k. Yeah. And then he lost them all in and he was raging. And I was just like, come on, bro. You just want like third place money, you know? <laughs> it was Dan Kishu. Uh, no, it was an old guy. Yeah, yeah. Dan oh. Kishu. Oh, okay. Yeah. You see, I don't know any of the names, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I go play live and I'm at a table and somebody goes, oh, I'm so-and-so online. Like after two hours, or somebody will tell me in the chat, hey, he is, you know, so-and-so. All right, I'm going to unpack. Right. Yeah. Cool. How much yeah. do you have? Uh, 12 bigs. 12 bigs. You? <gasps> so we just sat down. It's day three. There's only 22 people left. After about four hands, I get dealt king, six of hearts in the big blind. I only have 12 big blinds at this point. It falls around to the button. He's not the type of player that goes completely crazy, but I've seen him open some looser hands like Queen-9 offsuit, Queen-10 offsuit, and I've seen him make a call for a bounty with a little bit of a weaker hand. All I need to know here is that he's very aware of bounties, mainly because the small blind only has five big blinds. I have 12 big blinds. There's still a 75,000 euro bounty in the pot. This really means that people have to push the pace. If you have a hand like 8-9 offsuit, if you have a hand like 7-5 offsuit, pocket deuces, ace-5 offsuit, you name it, the button's gonna go all in. In fact, I think even recreationals go a bit harder for the bounties from what I've seen. I've seen people call 22 big blinds all in with jack six offsuit for a bounty. Everybody wants a 75k bounty. Unsurprisingly, the button goes all in. The small blind thinks for a while. He folds, too bad. That would have made it even easier. Now I have a decision to make. I'm trying to talk to him, see if I can feel out some information. He's not really giving me much. He only says it's the right move. That could mean multiple things though. Does he say it's the right move because he has a good hand? Or it's the right move because there's bounties in play? I think it's important not to overthink this hand. If he would go all in for 10 big blinds on the button, King Six of Hearts would almost be a call without the bounties in play. These are the spots I have to take. I call. He has Ace-10 offsuit. I have over 40% here. The flop's not great. 10-6-9. One heart. I'm really gonna need some help here. The turn is the Queen of Diamonds. This offers some possibilities as now I can make a straight with a jack. I need a king, six or jack. The river's the jack of clubs. We make a full double. 490 please sir, back in the game. It's the next orbit. We have a great stack now, 25 big blinds. We're playing a million in 20,000, 40,000 with 40,000 ante. The stack to my right is still short. Obviously I'm hoping for him to go all in and me having a hand to isolate him with. He looks down at his hand. He goes all in for five and a half big blinds, and I look down at pocket fives. This is great. Pairs perform really well in multi-way all-in situations. So even if I go all in, I'm gonna get called tons by ace highs, and some people might even fold sixes or sevens because we're, we're shoving from mid position. I think for a little bit, and I announce all in. I'm all in. All in. 
The sacks to my left cover me, they quickly get out of the way, which is always a relief. At the very least, we're not gonna bust this tournament right now. The big blind has 20 big blinds, which is 800,000. Not only is he the big blind, he's also the young brother of Lim Yo Wan, the Starcraft legend called Slayer's Boxer. I talked to him a little bit yesterday and it was actually pretty cool to meet him and talk some Starcraft. He goes in the tank. He's really deliberating it for two minutes. I'm really praying for a fold. But at this point it does seem like he has a hand like Ace-Jack or Ace-10 or maybe even a hand like King-Queen suited and he wants to make the call. Obviously I'm gonna isolate the short stack all in, so I'm gonna do it with a wider range of hands. But it's still 20 big blinds and his tournament life to call. Reluctantly he calls and he turns over pocket tens. What a disaster. Pretty big nid roll by him that hands a slam dunk all in. It's a great spot for pocket tens, but it doesn't matter for me. There's no point in focusing on details like that. It doesn't make a difference for me if he has sixes, eights, tens or aces. I just need to hit a five. The flop's a disaster. 10, six, four. He immediately flops trips. I'm really banking on hitting a three or an eight to make a straight draw. The original shover has queen nine. He's out of the game. He's gonna get busted unless some runner runner miracle happens, but it's none of my concern. I need to keep my stack here. The turn's a disaster again. A five. This makes me draw to one out only. I need the remaining five in the deck. The rivers are blank and we get smelted. We only have five big blinds left. Such a shame, what a good spot and possibly my first bounty. We're gonna need a spin. I have 180,000 left, which is about four and a half big blinds. I have to keep my head in the game because I can still make a comeback. The small blind makes it 140,000, putting me all in. This is a big moment for me. I have a six of diamonds. This is honestly the best thing I can hope for. Of course, I would love to see a high pocket pair, but a6 is gonna go a long way, and it's very likely I'm up against lower high card hands. Let's see the board. Ace, queen, jack. That's perfect. The small blind checks. Another great sign. The button checks as well. The turn is an eight. Also perfect. The small blind now bets out 200k. This doesn't have to mean anything bad, as he can still have a queen, a jack, or an eight that he just wants some protection with. He wants to get heads up all in versus the bounty and push the button out. If I win this pot, I'll have over 10 big blinds again, a really playable stack and it wouldn't be the first time this tournament. I'm already thinking about it. The button calls. Again, I think if the button has a really strong hand, he's gonna get some value now, as both these players have more than a million chips to play with behind. The river might be the worst card in the deck for me. A king. At this point, I'm really hoping for checks to maybe beat a hand like king 9 and the other person having a hand like jack 9 or jack 7 suited. When a small blind bets another 200,000, my hope sinks. This really looks like a value bet. The button announces all in, the small blind calls, and the small blind rolls over 10-9 for a turn straight, and the, the button rolls over 10-8 for a rivered straight. GG, good luck. Good we finished third in the hand, our tournament's over, and our dream is dead. Very unfortunate. Ay, 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 GG. Ah, 250k first, fuck. A knot bust in uh, 19th out of 800 people. Damn, oh well. GG. I'm disappointed though, but it's weird. I have this weird mix of being at peace with it because I was short so much during the tournament, won a lot of all-ins, but also disappointed, you know? 250k first. Fuck. On to the next one. It was a fun trip though. I played a lot of poker this trip. Hope all you guys liked that. Hope you liked all the poker as well. It's been really fun for me playing live again. I really feel like I made some adjustments that worked really well. I think I played well at the PCA, but I think there were some key hands, notably white t-shirt guy that uh, stood out. Uh, I think I played pretty well this trip, made some big moves, made some good calls. I think my betting structures were really good, especially yesterday. Uh, the hand with kings that we talked about, I think uh, was very good. I think that showed good strategy, etc. I'm happy with what the guys said about my play as well. You know, every time I discuss a hand with Park or Sam or Spraggy, um, there's good points in there, things to work on. It's one of those things where I'm just like excited now. Now I just think like, okay, cool. You know, I, maybe I want to do a video, like, you know, run all the hands or talk to BBZ about all the hands that I played here that I showed you guys in the strategy bit. So I don't know. It's so funny how quick it can go, right? It's like, honestly, I feel over it. I made a day three. I have to say though, like just talking about it, I'm really happy to have that day three feeling again. It's been so long since I've had that live. And um, even back in the day, I just wasted so many opportunities and I feel I really maximized this, you know, grind at 10.50 McBlind, so. Proud of myself for how I played, proud of all the poker I put in. And uh, yeah, on to the next one. Get to go home, see my family, can't wait for that. Then back to YouTube. I have a really cool new strategy. Oh no, it's not a strategy. I have a new, cool new uh, segment coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we're gonna start recording that next week. Gonna make some videos on the Pokestars channel as well about some hands. So lots of stuff to look out for, stay tuned. 
if you like the vlogs and if you appreciated the content, uh, make sure you subscribe. There's a lot more coming out. I do a lot more stuff than this as well. So there's like four or five videos a week coming out, daily shorts, anything. So check it out. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment if you have any questions about the hands or you want to say anything. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.